Hi guys. Paul here from PA Brew News. Cold down here. See the old breath. But as I have a really wobbly sounding vinyl going on for some reason right now, I have a special beer review to be doing today. And it is a PA Brew News beer review, which is even booter. So that's good. We got a PA Brew for the PA Brew News right now. Listen to Night of Living Dead, the original soundtrack from, soundtrack from Waxford Records from Pennsylvania, of course, 1968 Nevin City, Pennsylvania. So again, very PA esque goodness in the backwoods of PA in the dungeon at PA Brew News. So here we go. Why am I saying so much of crop again and again and again? I'm saying this because this is my 17. Hundredth one seven zero zero seventeen hundredth video on YouTube. So here we go. I looked over there on the old uh, YouTube's and I saw I clicked over to the seventeen hundred mark. So I'm this is my commemoration to that. And we have Bob Barley, a uh, barley wine from the Boxcar Brew Works from Du Bois, Du Bois, Pennsylvania. They're off Interstate 80, uh, a little bit south on 219. Beautiful little place. They have like a creamery, a mini golf thing, and stuff like that. Plus they have this literally box car with a brewery in it, Rockstar Brew Works. This is actually uh, a year, a little over a year, maybe January 2018, I believe, I think it was, they said. I don't know if it was on the bottle as well, but it's definitely not a, a new brew. It has been a Jimadid. I think the red caps and the white caps, like the red caps for 2019, the white caps for 2018, something like that, to that, to that extent. Uh, I don't know too much about it, but this is a 12% English style barley wine aged in bourbon barrels. So this is a bourbon barrel aged English barley wine, 12% happy days makes me go to smiles. <laughs> so that's good. And I think it's from January, 2018. So that's awesome. Crack it open. We have the Ouija board bottle open. We have a plain white cap. That's where that goes. And let's crack it in. We're going to throw this one into the Firestone Walker glass. There we go. Throw about that in there. I'm going to savor this beer before I have to go bed buys. But little <laughs> sheets and sheets of alcohol blanketing this already. I can see, see sheets and sheets of alcohol blanking this. Let me show you the, the box car brew works real quick. Hopefully you can see it from that vantage. I understand that the camera is far away, but you have to get the whole breath of the background of the goodness. Up to the light, nice caramel ruby hue, clear as a bell, soft streaming carbonation. Off, slightly off white head on this one right there. But again, just blankets of alcohol. It's gonna aroma. Cheers. Raisin fig, date a little bit, peppery caramel, burnt like a little bit of a burnt sugar, plus a little bit of a hint of a smoky fall leaf. Nice little caramel tones. That nice peppery bourbon's coming through as well. Nice little walnut oaky finish. Yeah, definitely got a little bit of walnut husk on there. Doesn't it smell extremely sweet, but it does have a nice little burnt sugars, burnt caramels, toffee, brown sugar tonalities as well. But yeah, the nice toasted brown bread tonalities. Again, raisin dates, figs, those kind of qualities. Nice little caramel, burnt sugars, brown sugars, toffee. So, and a nice caramel peppery bourbon that try to kind of wrap everything around and really bring it together. This is one of my favorite styles of beer. You know, I'm a big, huge imperial stout guy, but English barley wines, just well-made, huge ABV English barley wines with age on it. It just sings, and especially when you put them in bourbon barrels, you know, brandy barrels, stuff like that. Ugh, oh, the things you can do. So much better than, in my opinion, it's so much better than English style, American style of barley wines. English style bar wines just become so amazingly, joyably savory and cold winter nights with a book and a rainstorm and this and this and just 
fire and ugh, horror movies or reading Lovecraft, all good stuff. So let's get into this. And again, my 1700th video commemoration, that's what I'm doing this for. So cheers to you. I was going to let this sit, but I didn't realize I had a milestone right underneath me. So, wow, you can see the breath really good in there. But cheers to everyone for following me, the 686 subscribers. I can't seem to get over that. I, I wish I was at the 1,000 mark. I, you know, everybody else seems to be able to get there. I just can't. I guess I'm just stuck at 686 because I, I can gain a 20 subscribers, but I'll lose 30. It's just it's weird. It's just one of those things. But uh, I'm a, I'm a uni I have a unique taste. And I think about it, that uh, certain people need to have a unique taste to to stomach me, I guess, too, at the same time. So it can't be for everybody. Hey, there you go. So anyway, this has been Paul. Let's check it out. Let's do this. Cheers. Yeah, the vinyl is a little wobbly, and I don't know why. It's an older player, though, too. I'm going to play it up in the upstairs and make sure it sounds the same, or hopefully doesn't sound the same. That is so mellow. It's mellow. It's got a nice, beautiful caramel to it. A little pepperiness. You have soft vanilla tones, little oaky tones, little woody notes. Not extremely dry, not extremely sweet. It's kind of somewhere right in that beautiful middle of this drinkable goodness, if you know what I mean. Toffee, brown bread, notes like that. You get a little raisin, you have a little fig, you have those little date kind of qualities. They're still there. It's not super sweet. It's not super fruity. It's just there's nuances of it. This is a very toned down beer. It's very, it's very, um, it's cohesive, Joe. It does work well together. But there's a sharpness from the ABV. There's a sharp ethanol bite to it. That uh, bourbon does have a kick to it as well. It, it, it lifts the beer and, and ooh, as you breathe, it's just amazing. Then the nose is more bombastic. The nose has more bombastic tones than the actual the beer flavor does. It's still really nice. Medium side of a medium body, so a bit thin. I like it out a little bit higher. There's a nice little oily and a slight stickiness, so it tapers to that low side of a, of a medium mouthfeel, but not quite there. Somewhere in between a, like a high side of a medium mouth and a medium side of a medium mouthfeel, it fluctuates a little bit, a little stickiness, which is nice. This has a little bit of a toffee tonality, burnt sugars, little, those, those kind of, kind of hints of a caramel in there doesn't get full on savory doesn't get full on sticky caramel sticky kind of you know you know caramel drizzled like raisins and figs and dates it doesn't get to that sticky kind of savory quality but there's a lot of good aspects to this beer still i feel because there is a nice sharp kick from that abv that 12 percent, and obviously it only has like a year or, or two years of age this thing should be sat down for five years somewhere in that kind of quality but they don't make enough to really buy a stock and, and do that so this is a special thing this is a special beer and i'm using it for this special occasion so there you go it drinks amazingly well for 12 percent. it really does i mean this drinks like it's eight percent and i know that's not you know the craziest difference in the world but that's four percent I mean, this, this, you can tell there's some bourbon in, in it. It was aged in bourbon. There's a kick of bourbon, that pepperiness, whoop, that waft that ABV, everything's going through. But other than that, it is just so beautifully, delectably smooth, easy drinking, unassuming, very nuanced, very nice. No idea this is 12% at all. I'm very happy it's 12% because I want to kick. Chunk it all in, see if there's any sedimentation left in the bottle. Nice little yeast cake at the bottom, like that. Keep that in there. All right, that, that first walk is beautiful. Nice peppery caramel bourbon just walking around the palate. And you get soft nuances of toasted brown bread quality. 
you're picking up a little bit more of those fruits, those dates tones, that vanilla starts walking on the side of the palate. It's not extremely bombastic. It is nuanced, it's subtle, it's smooth, it's delicate, but it's all there. It's still cohesive. Everything's working to well, well, well together. Everything is still there, so it's enough to enjoy it. It's not a boring beer at all. It is what I, this beer reminds me of Basil Hayden because Basil Hayden is still very full flavored. It's very nice, but it's it's cohesive. It's but it's delicate. It's complex, but it's nuanced. It's something so easy drinking. You don't have to add a dab of water to bring out any notes. They're all there. They're easy. They're approachable. They're very easy drinking. You can get. They're very dangerous too by that uh, aspect. And this has that. And I love Basil Hayden for that. And I'm really liking this beer for that same reason. It's so unassuming. And you just saw oh, no, 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 no. oh yes, I mean, no, 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 no. I mean like you're just doing this, but then you're still finding new flavors as you drink it. And it's twelve percent, so it's gonna smack you in the face. I wish I bought more than one bottle. I wish I bought more than one bottle. They only had maybe like ten bottles of this in, the, in like a side cupboard. And at first he said, oh, no, they're not for sale. But then like, oh, yeah, that's for sale. I'm like, oh, it is? There you go. So I think I only paid, um, I think, I think what it was is something like five bucks, something like that, eight dollars. Some, I, I think, I, I, I swear, I think I only paid like five bucks for this beer. I don't think I paid more than five bucks for this beer, which is amazing. You know, that's really super awesome. I don't know how much it actually cost, but I don't think I paid more than five bucks for this beer. Uh, but yeah, definitely good. And it says, brewed and bottled by friends at Boxcar Brew Works, Du Bois, or Du Bois, uh, PA. Absolutely just great. Let's see. An intense yet balanced beer with notes of burnt caramel, toasted bread, dried fruits, vanilla, and toasted oak tannin. The aging process is in the very finest PA bourbon barrels. <coughs> okay, you can't say bourbon barrels if it's from PA. It's it's whiskey okay that's a little thing there that's a little note for you pa whiskey barrels because it's not made in kentucky you can't call it bourbon bad on you and adds new levels of flavor to this beer henceforth producing the very best the very finest barley wine and this is a very nice barley wine honestly i had i had the sukaba recently and that was really nice too. It had a lot of kick. It had a lot of kick. You could see, you, you knew the ABV of that beer, if you know what I mean. It, it was really, really potent in that kind of aspect. But then, excuse me, it was bombastic, but it wasn't very dynamic. I had Sukaba, I had three bottles of uh, Sukaba actually, not at the same time. And I, I found it very nice, but it wasn't like this nuanced level where there's all these different subtle things coming and transpiring and happening. It was very big and very bombastic, and there was maybe like six things total, but they were huge, you know what I mean, that kind of thing. But it was also evasive. It was a little, you know, it was harder to drink. It was like, whoa, kick, whoa, kick, whoa, kick. This is just really mellowing and relaxing and just picking apart those little subtle nuances as I drink it is very enjoyable. And um, yeah, just having a good time with it. It's a good beer. It is a good beer. I'm glad it is. I'm glad it does kind of rise and fall, and it's not just in that kind of medium to low medium mouth drop. I'm glad there is a little bit of a tapering and stickiness. I, mean, I wish there was more, but I'm glad that there is what there is. There it is. Very fine beer. Very fine beer. Boxcar Brew Works. This is their Bob Barley. And I did have another barley wine from them, it's too. It's like beers for barley wine at 12%. This one, though, and I, I like this one a lot better than that one. Bob Barley, an English-style barley wine, Asian bourbon barrels, which was actually, as we found out, PA whiskey barrels, which I really wish they would have put the, the distillery. Maybe Wiggle. Maybe it was Wiggle. I don't know. That's a, that's a well, well-known PA distillery. But maybe it was Wiggle's whiskey. I don't know. Uh, but yes, the very finest PA whiskey barrels, 
to add a new level of flavor to this beer and henceforth producing very finest barley wine. So I'm liking it. So there we go. This one, Paul from Pay Brew News. I'm going to give this one a solid. I don't know. I don't know. Do, do I know? Because I don't know if I know. Mm. The vinyl's done and so am I. And I'm going to try to save this little last bit. I'm, I'm enjoying this quite a lot. I'm just going to say fuck it and give it the 9.5. I'm going to give it the 9.5. This is Paul from PA Produce. Thank you again for joining me for my 1700th video on YouTube. Not beer review, but video on YouTube. And hope to see you for another 1700th. Cheers. <laughs>